Hi everyone, I'm Fabio Nonato, a Principal Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. In this video, we will explore how to leverage the new EC2 Info1 instances based on the AWS Inferentia chips to run high-performance and cost-effective machine learning inference jobs through SageMaker Neo. Info1 instances are based on AWS Inferentia chips, which are custom-built by AWS for machine learning inference. The Inferentia chips are coupled with the latest custom second-generation Intel Xeon scalable processors and have up to 100 gigabits networking to enable high-throughput inference. These instances are based on the AWS Nitro system, which is a combination of dedicated hardware and lightweight hypervisor that enables faster innovation and enhanced security in Amazon EC2. The EC2 Info1 instances feature AWS Neuron, an SDK that natively integrates with popular machine learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, and MXNet, and optimizes model performance for the Inferentia chips. The Neuron SDK is integrated into SageMaker Neo to make it easy for developers to deploy their ML models to Info1 instances. With this combination, Info1 instances provide high performance and lower cost inference in the cloud, making it economically feasible to deploy complex and large-scale machine learning inference applications such as image recognition, speech recognition, natural language processing, and fraud detection. With up to 16 AWS Inferentia chips, Info1 instances can scale in performance to 2000 Tera operations per second and deliver extremely low latency for real-time applications. The large on-chip memory of AWS Inferentia allows caching of machine learning models directly on the chip. This eliminates the need to access outside memory resources during inference, enabling low latency without impacting bandwidth. In today's example, we will start by setting up a SageMaker notebook to train an image classification model on MNIST dataset using TensorFlow. Then, we will compile it using Amazon SageMaker Neo and deploy the model on a SageMaker endpoint running on an Inf1 instance and use the Neo Deep Learning runtime to make inferences in real time with low latency. So let's get started. First, from the management console, we can navigate to SageMaker. Then, we'll navigate to Notebook Instances on the left-hand side options and create a new notebook. Here, we can give the notebook a name, Info1-Test, and pick an instance type a little bit bigger than the default one. We can leave most of the default options as is, but we will add a Git repository we can clone a public Git repository with the code from our project. Here, we're going to use the AWS Labs SageMaker examples. The URL is here on a QR code for you to copy. So, we can just clone with HTTPS and add the HTTPS URL to the Git repository URL field. We hit Create New Notebook Instance, and that's it. Now SageMaker is provisioning a new notebook instance on an MLC5 xlarge EC2. This will take approximately 3 minutes, so I'll hit pause on the recording and come back when it's provisioned. Now with the instance up, we have a couple of options. We are going to open a Jupyter Lab, which will get us a direct environment in the machine just provisioned. The Git repository that we cloned will be available directly at the root of our working directory. Here, Amazon SageMaker examples. We can navigate to our Jupyter Notebook so we can start our model training job. This notebook is based on the distributed TensorFlow training with SageMaker example and it contains all the steps we need to create a new model and persist it on an AWS Simple Storage Service, S3, as an object that we can refer later to and deploy to the info type instance. Let's start by setting up the environment. This will create a SageMaker session that we're going to use throughout the whole notebook. As we're setting up the environment, we can notice that there are a few utility functions that will help us with downloading the MNIST dataset and converting it to TF record type which is the data format we will use during your SageMaker training job.
This data will be placed on a data folder right next to our notebook by the convert to method on the utils module. We can now reference this data and upload it to our training session using the SageMaker session upload data function. Our next step is to construct a script to run the distributed training using the SageMaker TensorFlow API. Luckily, we can use the implementation of a convolutional neural network available in the mnist.py module. This implementation is an adaptation of the TensorFlow mnist example and provides a model function method used for training, evaluation, and inference. At the end of the script, we're going to see a neo process and neo post process methods. These methods will interface with the compiled model and process the incoming requests and outgoing inference results into their correct format. To create our training job, we will use a SageMaker TensorFlow estimator method, which takes as arguments the entry point script, mnist.py, the session role, and training parameters, including the number of steps the type of instance, and the instance count. We will be using two ML65x large instances for training. Using the fit method, we kick off the training job and SageMaker will take care of provisioning the instances. The log of each instance will be printed on screen as training progresses, and in the end, the training job will generate a saved model for compilation. This training job will take approximately 7 minutes to complete, so let's skip ahead until the point we have it all completed. As we scroll through the logs, we can see the two training workers, the model evaluation, and the number of training steps. The last piece of information in this log is the training time, which is just above 7 minutes. Now we're ready to deploy our model in an inf1 instance. We start the compilation by retrieving the output path of the training job, so we can reuse it as an argument for the compile model method. This SageMaker new method will optimize our model for our desired deployment target. We are targeting the ML underscore inf1 instance family for deployment. And we're using the same output path. This compilation will again take some minutes to complete, so let's skip ahead to the deployment phase. Deploying the recently compiled model to a new inf1 instance powered by the inferential chips is quite straightforward. We will only require the SageMaker new deploy method and to define the instance type. Here we will use an inf1 x large type, but depending on the size of the compiled model, we could easily switch it up to a bigger machine, such as 6x large with 4 inferential chips, or 24x large with 16 inferential chips. As the model is being deployed by SageMaker Neo, we will create a serializer method so we can call the endpoint directly with the MNIST images as NumPy arrays. The predictor endpoint expects a bytes sequence for the data if the serializer is not specified. As the endpoint becomes ready, we can now send requests and retrieve results in real time with low latency. So we will load 10 MNIST images and fire them sequentially at the model endpoint. As you can see, we almost cannot keep up with the responses as they come back. We also notice that the model is correctly predicting our test images proving that we successfully trained, optimized, and deployed this MNIST image classification model with SageMaker Neo. Now, as you're done, SageMaker also provides a delete endpoint method, which you can use to spin down the info instance running our endpoint. Before deleting the endpoint, I would like to show you where to find more information on the status and duration of your compilation and training jobs, as well as the endpoint configuration itself. If we come back to the AWS console and reload my expired session, we will find the links to the training jobs, compiled models, and finally the endpoint we are using, all on the left hand side menu options.
I would like to invite you to explore more about Inferentia and other tutorials and examples on the AWS Labs GitHub. I hope this walkthrough was fun. Thank you for watching.